This one is about logging in Python. First up, the advice that most people will give you, and why it's wrong. Here I have an empty Python file, and the first thing we're going to do is import logging. The way logging works in Python is that you call logging with some level, and the levels are as follows. Here you can see the logging page for all the information about logging in Python, and we have several levels. These have a numeric value as well as a name. So logging.critical is the highest one. Next is logging.error, logging.warning, info, debug, and not set. If we set the file to warning, for instance, which is the default, it will do everything above it, but nothing below it. So if you have a logging.info call in your file, but your logging level is set to logging warning, then it won't log the info. There's also a hidden one called logging.exception, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and it really goes along the lines of error. They're practically the same thing, but one has slightly more capabilities. Okay, so to start logging, it's as simple as logging.warning, and we're just gonna say something went wrong. That would really be an error in real life, but um, for now, let's just go with it. And you'll see when we execute this, we get a warning, root something went wrong. Now that's pretty useless. We could have just printed that, but we do have the log level. Now, in order to customize this somewhat, there is a logging.basic config, and we can set its level property to logging.info. Run this again with info. Actually, let me just prove that it doesn't do anything first. So if we do info, and then I comment that out, you'll see nothing gets logged. Now the logging level is info, now it's logging. Now, if you don't want to print, we can also specify a file name, and I created a folder here called logs. So we're just going to write to logs, log.txt. And when we run this now, you'll see in logs, a log file called log.txt created, and this got written to it. Now, if we run this again, you'll see a second thing got written to it. Now, there is a type of file logging we can do, and it's file mode. And these really follow along with the what you do with files. We could just have write, which will actually overwrite our log file each time something goes in, which is a terrible idea. Or we can do A and run this a couple of times, not that fast. And you'll see it now logs without rewriting the file. We also have something called a format. And this is a string that tells the system how we want to format a log message. And this is one that I created a little bit earlier. And basically, these directives point to a certain variable in Python, which tells it what to log. The first one here is the date and time. The second one is the name of the logger. Then we have the logging level and the message. If we run this a couple of times and then go to the log, you'll see that now we have the date and time to the millisecond, root because the logger isn't named, info and something went wrong. So this is a lot more useful already. Now, I don't suggest you do it this way. It's just messy. You can't set the log name, which can be really, really useful. And you really get lost in the scope. So I'm going to get rid of it. And then instead of doing logging, we're going to do logging.getLogger. And we're going to give it a name. It will give it a name by default, but we are going to give it a name slightly more useful. Now, because I mainly work on distributed systems, I always like to use platform to determine part of my name. And let's make this an F string. And in here, we can do platform.node. And then I'm going to say some system. And that would really be the name of the system you're trying to create. That's PL SQL. I'm not doing that. And this returns a logger. If we do log equals, and then here we're going to do log.info. What we need to specify is a handler for the logging. Now, Python out of the box has a ton of handlers for you. Some of them are sort of in the default of logging. So if we do handler equals logging dot file handler, you see that's in the default. But there are some more powerful ones in a separate library, and I'll take you to those after we've done the file handler. So in file handler, it takes two main arguments. The first one is a file name, and the second is a mode. So if we do file name, and this is just going to be logs, log.txt, and mode is, we're going to use A for append. A is the default, so you don't actually need to specify it. And then what we need to do is register the handler with the log. So log.addHandler, handler. Now that on its own, if we run it, isn't actually going to do what we think. If we go to our log.txt, there's nothing in it extra. And actually, let's clear this out so we can see it clearly and just make sure there is nothing in it. They've all close and run. You'll see it's empty again. Okay. The reason for that is info is not the default logging. So we need to set that on log. So log.setLevel. I'm going to do logging.info. And if we run this now, it should log to the file. Something went wrong. And it's just the message because we haven't set up the handler for the text. And I'm going to copy in my format string. So now let's create a formatter so we can format it properly. So formatter equals logging.formatter. And you'll see here we have FMT. 
And we're going to set that to equal our format string. And then we're also going to bind it to our handler. So if you run this now, our log file now has my machine name, some system, and actually we should have put a dash between that. Something went wrong, and then the date and time. Now, I do a lot of stuff with servers in different areas, and so this time is pretty pointless to me. I need the time of the actual server and what time zone it's in. So we can change the date format. And the way we do that is there should be a second parameter in here, which is date format. Now, I never know what date format to use, so I always Google this. So this is what Google normally comes back with. I think it normally includes another slash Z, which I get rid of because I don't want to. So let's just check our log file before we run this, and you'll see this is the date format. And if we run it now, you'll see it's given us the plus zero one to say, hey, I'm one hour ahead of GMT. So now I can identify which time zone this is in, or at least the time offset to work out exactly when this log entry came in. Why is there a blank space there? I must have left that in somehow. Just save that. And I'm going to add a dash before some system. OK, so that lets us log to a file on the system, and we're great. Now, the great thing about doing it this way is we can now create a library. So if we just do root new Python package, we're going to call it logger. And let's create a get logger function name. And then let's just paste in everything we just did and import logging. And this needs to be a def and we need to indent. And this is going to return to us our logging object, which is log. And now that I have that, I can simplify all this code from the point of view of my program to simply just get a logger. So I can take all of this out and then I can just change logging to logger and change this to logger. What went wrong? I bet I put log underscore, didn't I? Yes, I did. OK, that will work. Why isn't platform defined? I'm a moron. We go back into our logger file. We didn't use name and we should have used name. OK, let's try this again. See, programming for years and still make tons of mistakes. And our log file looks just like it did before. Before we move on to some more useful handlers, let's actually just set up a loop to do quite a bit of logging. I'm just going to do while true. And this will basically run forever. And in our loop, we're going to log program running. And I'm going to set a little counter up here. And it's going to be set to zero. And actually, let's do while count is less than 10. We're going to do some logging. And then here, I'm going to do if count modulus 5 equals 0, x equals 1 divided by 0. I'm going to drop this into a try. And I'm going to capture here a divide by 0. So 0 division error. And then in here, we're going to do log dot exception. Something went wrong. And then let us run this. And that's going to run forever because I didn't put a counter in there. OK. So if we go into our logger now, uh, log file, you'll see here that when the error occurs, and it occurs a couple of times throughout the logs, you'll see that it automatically imports this trace back, which lets us know exactly what failed in our program. This is very, very useful. We can catch it another way. So if I take our log.txt, and I'm actually just going to delete it because it makes it quicker. So in here, instead of catching an exception, we can catch an error. And if we run this now, You'll see that our log file has been recreated and there is no stack trace, which is why I prefer using exception. But what you can do here is set except info true, and this will make error work just like exception. And you'll see there the stack trace is now being included in the file. I tend to always use exception. It doesn't really matter if you want to use error except info. That's absolutely fine as well. In distributed systems where you can have lots of processes running on the same box, and you can have lots of nodes, you don't really want to be logging to separate boxes. It takes ages then to manage when you have an issue. What you want to do is log to a central location. And Python has a handler for that. So if we go into our logger and then do from logging dot handlers import HTTP handler, and then let us comment out our handler here. Handler equals HTTP handler. And the first thing it takes is a host. And our host is going to be 127.0.0.1. That is localhost. And I'm going to send these to port 8000. And my URL is going to be logs. And then my HTTP method is going to be get. Now, note here that the format string no longer has any effect. I'm pretty sure the date formatter still has an effect, though. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to take out our formatter. 
Note that it doesn't harm to leave the formatter in. It's just not used by the HTTP one. So what we're now going to do is in a separate window, I am going to do python -m HTTP.server. That will start a HTTP server on port 8000. And if we run our code now, and I go back here, you'll see that actually, instead of logging to the file, it's actually sent our logs to a HTTP server. And you can see here, it's got loads of information, thread number. It's basically everything that the logger can output, this does output. Now, because our server doesn't actually have a log page, these are all getting 404. But if you actually set up a service to capture all these, your logs can now be captured in a central place and written to a file there. And there you can do file rotation and everything else. Now, I don't personally use this. I actually use a message queue and write them all to there, and that uses a custom formatter. You can write your own formatters. They're not particularly difficult, but they are slightly more advanced than this topic, so I'm going to leave those for another video. Many people don't suggest using login.info. I actually like to use login.info for anything that I might want to track. So if I want to track number of searches and things for other uses, I will put them to info. And then when my service downstream gets them, it can move the info into a separate log file. I do use debug, but that should never ever be run on a production instance, just on a test instance to try and track down bugs. So far, we haven't done anything huge. That is about to change with the next video, where we are going to write a game of tic-tac-toe from the ground up where you'll be able to play another player, an AI, or even let the AI play itself. And the AI will be absolutely amazing. The next video is going to be absolutely crucial to a developer's development. It will take everything we've learned so far and put it into a single project, and you'll learn how everything then interacts. You can find that video top left, and with that, thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you on the next one.